pollination is really important to us. It's important economically to the farmers and growers who grow pollinator-dependent crops. And we know that the free service provided by bees to those crops is worth 53 million a year to the Irish economy. We also know that both the amount and the value of those crops is increasing all the time. Pollinators are also important to our health and well-being. You know, with, without them we wouldn't starve, but it would be really hard to have a healthy, balanced diet because it is the fruit and vegetables that are being pollinated. The third reason why pollination is so important is for the overall environment. We know that over three quarters of our wild plants also benefit from being pollinated by insects. So again, without bees and other insects, you know, the landscape would look totally different, be a lot less colourful, a lot less attractive as a place for us to live. And that would also have implications for tourism and for, for branding our produce abroad. So within Ireland we've got 98 different types of bees. I think most people think of just the honeybee, which you know lives in houses and looked after by beekeepers. But we also have 20 different kinds of bumblebees, and then we have 77 different kinds of what are called solitary bees. In the past we thought, you know, if there's a problem with pollination, we'll just bring in more hives. And what's really clear now is that that just won't solve the problem. So we need healthy honeybees, but we also need an abundance and diversity of those wild bees and, and other insect pollinators. More than half of our bees in Ireland have undergone substantial decline since the 1980s. And we know that unfortunately one third of our 98 species are threatened with extinction from this island. Bees are much like ourselves, you know, they need somewhere safe to live and they need enough food to feed themselves and their families. And unfortunately that's just what's not there anymore. We've also introduced, inadvertently introduced pests and diseases and that's particularly a problem for honeybees. And the level of pesticide use that, that we do apply across the countryside is having a negative impact on our pollinators. But really, you know, it's true to say that the main driver of decline is hunger. There's just not enough wildflowers for them in the landscape. Wild bees come out of hibernation in spring and they need food right from then through into the autumn when they go back into hibernation again. And really, you know, it's lack of flowers in the landscape that is the main driver of declines. It's hunger. For bees, it's just hunger. And interestingly, wild bees don't make honey, so they have no way of storing food. So, you know, it's true to say they're never more than a few days away from starvation, so it's so important that there's a continual supply of wildflowers in the landscape for them to feed on, right from spring through into the autumn. You know, I think we've become accustomed to managing the landscape in a certain way. You know, we trim hedgerows really neatly, we cut grass often to an inch of its life. And we use pesticides to tidy up, you know, whether it's spray and edging or the base of trees. We can choose to manage the landscape like that. But by having that neat and tidy approach, what you're doing is you're squeezing nature out. And that has consequences. And in this case, the consequence is that we're risking the free pollination service provided to us by bees that is so important to us. The All Ireland Pollinator Plan is about saying, you know, enough's enough, let's come together, let's try to do something, let's try to put a positive framework in place for action moving forward. The plan was published in September 2015 um, and it's supported by more than 80 governmental and non-governmental organisations and they've agreed to deliver 81 actions to try and make Ireland more pollinator friendly again. The plan was, was developed by a 15-member steering group and now the implementation is coordinated by the National Biodiversity Data Centre. And it is, it's a shared plan of action. Um, it has a number of different objectives, but really the main one is just looking at the landscape and saying, you know, is, can we make changes, can we make small changes so that pollinators can survive and thrive right across Ireland again. In some ways the beauty of, of the pollinator plan is that no one has to do a lot but it does take a lot of us doing a wee bit. And really, it is small changes. Bees need food, shelter and safety to survive. You know, often the changes that you have to make, or the actions that you have to take to provide that, they're not complicated. 
And also they're often do not actions rather than do. So you're letting nature do, do the hard work for you. It's things like if we didn't spray or, or cut dandelions in spring, we'd have more pollinators. You know, if we didn't spray so much, we'd have more pollinators. If we didn't cut our hedgerows so often to allow them to flower, so you see these beautiful, you know, white blossoms right across the countryside in May, we'd have more pollinators. And again, if we didn't cut grass so often, you know, whether it's on roadsides or schools or gardens, parks, field corners on farms, you know, if we just allow grass to grow a bit longer, let the wildflowers also grow, we would have more pollinators. It really is that simple. You know, more flowers equals more bees. And I think the beauty of it is that more flowers also equals, you know, a more healthier, a more distinct, and a more colourful landscape for us to live in, as well as visitors to come here to experience. The pollinator plan is a call to action. All of us who have some responsibility for a piece of land, right from the smallest garden to the biggest farm, have a role to play. And to help people understand the best things that they can do to help, we've been producing evidence-based guidelines. So these guidelines give you lots of different ideas and options for things that you could do. We have one for farmers, there's one for councils, we have one for local communities, so that might be a tidy towns group, Ulster and Bloom, or maybe a residence association. There's one for businesses, we have one for what you can do in your garden, and then we published a junior All-Ireland Pollinator Plan for schools. So these are not things we think will work, they're things that scientific studies have shown will have a positive impact on bees. You can download all the guidelines freely from our website pollinators.ie on there we've also got lots and lots of other resources we've got how-to guides for some of the more complicated actions we've got case studies we've got signage templates hopefully everything that that you would need if, if you do want to help <laughs>